Hey guys, what's up? This is Joe from Prime Cuts Blog, and I got Justin behind the camera taking the shots. And today we're going to show you how to fabricate a whole ribeye. Very easy, something you can purchase and uh, do yourself, save a lot of money on your cut steaks. If you plan to have a big cookout or a barbecue, and uh, I'm going to show you how we do it here at Caminito today. So, without further ado, let's get it on. What we have here is ribeye steak, a little bit of fat on the outside, we got a fat lip on the underside, and we got a little bit more fat underneath. And basically what we're going to be doing is just trimming, cleaning it up, and portioning it out into some nice, easy to eat, and even easier to cook steaks. So, I'll show you what I do. I'd like to start with a lip, which is this piece bottom inch, inch and a half, which tends to be all fat, even though it's kind of hard to see with some of the meat still over it, uh, I can tell you that that's all fat right there. And here at Caminito, we don't want it. So what I'm doing, simply, just cutting it down, getting into the good stuff. And as you can see right there, you got what's called the foot of most steaks. Very fatty, you can keep it if you like that. I do leave a good bit of fat on the steaks to preserve moisture and to add flavor, but this is a bit excessive. So, in the trash it goes. Next, what I do is I clean up the back side. And that is not too much fat. It's just kind of an outer skin-sized layer. But it's tough to eat. It's a little bit sinuous. It's where the bones are. So, for that reason, it doesn't render down as it cooks, as some other types of fat do. And we're going to take it off. Really not a lot to ribeye. Um, it's going to maintain the same sort of shape. It's not one of those crude steaks that looks like something different before and after it's fabricated and broken down. It's going to look pretty much the same. Just a lot neater, cleaner, and meatier. So, getting that off is not really a problem. You don't want to take too much down because a lot of the fat that's on this steak is holding it together. And if you go and break it down too far, what you're going to have is a steak that's going to kind of fall apart into segments on you on the grill. So this is kind of a less is more kind of effect. On the top, the bone sections, this is a good fat. This is the kind of fat that's going to melt into your steak, add flavor. And you can usually tell if you touch it and it's soft, it's good. If you touch it and it's hard or it feels stringy, then that's a tough kind of fat. It's not going to be easy to eat and it's not going to taste good. So, take it off. One thing that you do want to do is check the bone grooves because sometimes there are little chips in there and you don't want to eat those either. This guy feels clean. So I flip it over, go to the underside, clean this up, and this is the last step that we got to do before we portion it out. So what we're looking for here, kind of use your fingers, is any loose stuff like this. This is more for appearances only, but uh, certainly nice to take it off uh, for your guests or for your customers or whatever. But just uh, it's easier to eat, it tastes better, and it's going to look a lot nicer. So, simply just holding the blade kind of parallel to the steak here, running it along, taking off some of the flimsy loose stuff. You don't need to go too hard, and again, you don't want too much off. Just enough. It's looking pretty good. And then the last thing to focus on is that bottom foot. There is going to be a little bit more on the underside. And again, just trim that off. Try not to take too much. Just like that. This little line right here, you can kind of feel. It feels really dense, that means there's a lot of fat under it. If it feels kind of soft, that means there's a thin layer of fat with a lot of meat under it. And we don't want to cut away any meat. So we're just going to shave off a little bit here. That right there to me looks like a pretty good to go ribeye. So flip her back over, neaten up the blade in the work area. And really, what you're left with here is just cutting it to whatever size you like. Uh, the Caminito, our ribeye is one of our biggest steaks. We're going to go for a 16 ounce cut right here. What I'm doing is just squaring off the end because the rounded end cut won't cook as neatly evenly or hold the same temperature as a squared off cut will. So, going for about an inch and a half, an inch and a quarter right here. Just 
go on there. What you have is a nicely fabricated ribeye with a little bit of fat on the edges for moisture and shape retention and a good bit of clean meat on the inside for consumption. Looks perfect to me. You can make them bigger, you can make them thinner, you can do whatever you want with them. Just uh, practice, be careful, and enjoy. There you have it.